In this particular part, this is the final part, we're going to run the app for the first time and see how it looks. And then maybe we'll change the appearance afterwards. So it's important to have an app that works and the way you make it, the way you make sure that it works is by running it and testing it. And it's also important that it's visually appealing. No one wants to use an app that doesn't look very good. So we're going to give it a test run, see how it looks, make sure it's working, perhaps change the appearance and then run it again with the updated visuals. All right, so now we have a fully working app. Let's see it in action. So I'm in viewcontroller.cs. I'm going to right click on the tip calculator dash iOS dot iOS. It's a bolded one. I'm going to go down to run with and we can select any one we really want. I'm just going to use the iPhone 5S. So this builds it, which is basically just compiling it, making sure the code is all right. If it says build successful up here, you know everything's fine. And down here, I'm just going to select the simulator. If I click that, here we go. We have our app up and ready. So this looks pretty much exactly like it does in the simulator. We're going to start by entering a cost. Let's say our meal was $45.67. Going to add a tip percentage, let's say 20%. And if we go calculate the total cost, sometimes you have to double click there, but it works. Spits out $54.80. So it is indeed basically 45.67 plus 20% of that should equal $54.80. So we know our app is working fine. Now, this however looks a little boring, so why don't we go ahead and give it some cool designs. So this is how it looks right now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change these text fields. So if we do this, we'll scroll down and we'll select this border style. So for your app, you can do basically whatever you want but I just kind of like the no borders there. And we're going to do the same thing here, border style. All right, so for each one, what do we want to do with the text? Well, let's first of all have it centered. And the button also centers. And this one will have centered as well. Now, let's give this some kind of a cool background. Let's go to, now we've selected the background, I'm not selecting any specific one. And so we're going to, this is under properties and under widget. So we don't need to give the background a name, but right now it's defaulted to a white color. So let's give it something different. If we scroll down to other, it gives us a choice so we can either choose from colors like this, or we can use the slider, the grayscale slider. We can just pick some kind of a bright color from here, or like this, or just pick something like this. So there's a lot of different ways to do this, a lot of different options. Which color should we choose? Should we stick with a nice dark blue? Let's stick with this color here. Now, this isn't necessarily good for this kind of a text, so let's go ahead and change it. We'll come out of this. And now let's change these fields. So what if we have some kind of a white text? So this is the text field. If we go to this one here and we change it to just a white color, which is one of the options, that will change the input text. And same with this. We're going to go to white color. Now notice how the placeholder text actually isn't changing. And that is because what we've done is we have changed the text color and not the placeholder text color. So let's, because we can't change the placeholder text color, we're just going to change the background of this field. And in fact, if we're changing the background of the field, Let's just change it to perhaps like a nice light blue or something. 
So we've selected one field. Just get rid of that. We don't want that up there. We'll scroll down until we find the background. So there's a view, the background, here we go. And let's have a, some kind of a custom color. So if we go here, let's make it like a really, really light blue. Now the only problem here is that it gets hard to see exactly what the color is because it changes when it's selected. So if we come out of this, let's see what the color looks like. That's not bad. I'll stick with it. So we can change the size a little bit. Let's make these fields a little bigger. And we have a little more freedom with the with the iOS design than with the Android design because Android kind of automatically slotted it into allocated spots. So let's just move this down a little bit. Make this a little bit bigger. And same with this. And we'll go ahead and change the background color. We'll keep it the same as what we had before. So if we go to recent colors, we use this one recently. So there we go. That's just a shortcut, so you don't have to try and find exactly the same color every time. For the calculate total cost button, let's have this be a different color. So we'll just select this. If we can select just the box, there we go. So we'll move it. I'll make it a little bit bigger there. Let's get this total cost out of the way. We'll adjust that later. All right, let's give this a different color. So again, in widget here, we have the text color as this right now. We'll change that in a little bit. Let's just change the background first. Now, what kind of a color do we want to give this? We could give it something crazy like a blue. We could give it something really crazy like a red or a yellow, whatever we choose. That's an interesting color there. Why don't we stick with that? Again, this can be whatever you want. I'm just trying to give something that is bold and will stand out. So we'll set that to be the color. Why don't we make this button a little bigger so as to really stand out. And if you want to give very specific heights, you can do that. I've just been adjusting the heights of these by basically clicking on these circles and dragging them. But you can be very specific. And if you go to layout, you can give a width. You can give a starting point from the left. You can change the Y height or its position on the Y axis. And you can change a height. So you can do this for all of these. If you go here, it's the same thing if you want to be really specific. In this case, I'm just trying to demonstrate that you can change your stuff, so I'll leave it. Now, I don't like that blue text, so I'm going to change the text color. Here we go, so if we go to button, text color, let's have something dark. Cool. And now calculate total cost, or the total cost field. Why don't we have it to be the same color as here? We could even have it white to be really bold. So if we go to background and we will change this to white color just so it really stands out. And we want it to be much bigger than that. Cool. All right. Let's bring this in a tiny bit. Okay, so this is all good. We've got our button set up, but we don't have the text is kind of hard to read. So let's change the text of each. We'll go to the text field and we can have plain or attributed text. We'll keep it as plain. This would change the uh, the text that's written inside of here. This changes the text color. So we no longer want white. Let's have, let's just have it black. And now if we click on this T under the font, 
we can change the font of it. So right now it's on system, but if we go to custom, then we can give it basically any any of these fonts, and there's a lot to choose from. I like Avenir next, so we'll keep it as that. We want just the perhaps a medium, and we want to increase the size. That looks good to me. And so we'll do the same here. If we go to color first of all, because it's going to be very hard to see a white color on there. And we go to this T. We'll go custom again. Change this again to Avenir next. The style will be medium. And the size will just make fit the box there. All right. Now the calculate total cost will do pretty much the same thing. The font system is kind of boring, so custom, again, Avenir next. This one will make bold, because we want it to really stand out. There's a calculate total cost, and then the total cost we want to stand out and be the most prominent feature, so we'll change that also. Avenir next and this one will be bold. This we will also increase the size because it's tiny right now. So you don't have to click on the arrows, you can just adjust it by giving it a value, let's say we want it to be 40, just to be really big. And there we go. So we've changed it a little bit. It's not necessarily the prettiest looking thing, but it looks pretty fun and fancy and it's bold and it sticks out. So you can play around with this a little bit and just kind of have some fun with it. There's a lot that you can do with the appearance. You can change colors, you can change fonts, you can change the look of these boxes. So let's see, let's run this app one more time. So we'll save it. I'm just pressing Command S but you can go to File and Save and we'll save this one as well. And let's just run this to see how the new design looks. So once again, we'll right click there and we'll hit run with iPhone 5S. And this is build successful. So we'll go to our simulator, it's still displaying the old one. And that's because we haven't stopped it. So if we want to make changes and then run it again, we usually have to click the stop button up here. Notice how once it's stopped, clicked it twice by accident, build cancelled, good. So if we click it, it's on play right now. If we click it, it will start the debugger, which we can select up here, release or debug. But for now, I don't want to run the debugger, so I'm just going to hit run with from 5S. So it's simulator opened and went into the background there. And here we go. Here's our new app. Here's the new appearance. So if we type in a cost, let's say 55 and 40 cents. Tip percentage can be 15. We calculate the total cost. We get the right number being printed out there. Fantastic. So the app looks a lot better than before. It works well. And yeah, this is basically a very basic tip calculator. So in this final part of the tutorial, we ran the app and changed the appearance to make it look good. So first we gave it a test run, then changed the text and the background appearances to make it more visually appealing. It's important to have something that looks good, otherwise no one's going to use your app. So by now, you should be able to change the appearance of your app and make sure that it's all running correctly. All right, this has been our series on Make a Tip Calculator in iOS. Thanks for tuning in.